definitely a question I get all the time. Can I, or is it worth it to get my real estate license here in Ontario to work part-time? My answer is always yes. I definitely recommend full-time, or at least having the goal to eventually be a full-time realtor, especially if you plan on growing a client database. But there are certain scenarios, like if you are a real estate investor, or plan on growing your real estate portfolio with investment properties, where it is a slam dunk. But we'll get into that, the investment side. We'll get into the positives, the negatives, the numbers, and what I would do if I had a full-time job and my real estate license trying to grow a business as a realtor. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys? Callum Moore here. And on this channel, I share information that we need to achieve real estate success. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing. At any point during the video, check out the description below. I list links to what we discuss, all my recommendations, and how to contact me down there. Let's get into the video. Okay, so my answer to the part-time real estate question is always yes, but it is followed with a question. What is your business plan as a realtor? What are your goals and plan of attack? And even what brokerage do you plan on working at? So we'll circle back to that later in the video, but we'll break this video down like this. First, we'll go through the negatives of having a full-time job and trying to run a successful real estate business. Second, the positives. There are definitely a few as mentioned. Then at the end, exactly how I would do it if I had a nine to five, Monday to Friday, 40 hour a week job. Okay, first, the negatives. Obvious one straight out of the gates is time. We have less of it to spend on prospecting, learning, refining our skills, and growing our business. Obvious one there. Next, our clients. The clients that we do have may want to see a property, for example, at Wednesday at 3 p.m., but we work until 5 p.m., so this won't be possible. Maneuvering your clients around your schedule is definitely something that can be done, so don't get me wrong, but they will start to notice if we are always catering to our schedule and not available to see properties on their time, as well as if they call. If they call during the hours we are working and we are not answering the phone, that will also be noticeable. The last two are brokerage related. If there are sales meetings and trainings, these meetings and trainings at a traditional brick and mortar brokerage will almost always be between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. And last, will the brokerage even hire part-time real estate agents? To the best of my knowledge, they almost always will, but I have heard of a few people, personal experiences, where they have felt a bit alienated or getting way less of their brokerage management's time because keep in mind, your broker of record or managing broker, a good portion of them are done selling real estate. They want their evenings and weekends free now as they have transitioned into more of a job themselves than growing a business. These are negatives for sure, but nothing that can't be overcome if our time management and choice of brokerage is on point. On to the positives. First, we have security. You know at your job, you can pay your bills. You can even pay your new bills and new expenses of being a realtor. You can provide for your family and have good peace of mind, nothing to take lightly at all. You also have money coming in that can be spent on marketing. Most jobs can cover bills plus some savings. And now that you're reinvesting back into yourself and growing a business, what used to go to savings can now be spent on smart marketing campaigns. Next, contacts at work. If you let everyone you know at your job that you have just got your real estate license, you can start to get clients straight from the job you currently work at. If that sounds like a bad idea, because if your boss finds out that you have another job, they might not be happy. It's time to get these terrible people out of your life so you can go full time, in my opinion. And last, this isn't so much my mindset, but definitely good to know. You don't need that many sales for it to make sense. So if you've just paid for your real estate education and joined a board, you're out roughly 7,500 just to start and we'll say that you have about 350 in monthly real estate expenses as well. If we take that number and times it by 12 and add in the education and initiation fees, we have $11,700 spent on our first year of being a real estate agent. In my area, which is Kitchener-Waterloo, Ontario, we have an average home price of any home at $752,000. If we take a conservative commission of 2%, we have 
$40. Add in a brokerage split of say 80-20, we have $12,032 putting us out ahead in our first year. If we can start a business and break even in our first year on just one sale, this is a pretty good business to start in my opinion. And of course, in our second, third, and moving onward years, we are paying significantly less now that the education portion is over and we are only now paying $350, for example, in monthly expenses moving forward. Of course, like mentioned, this isn't quite my mindset because if you think small, as in all I need is one sale a year, this is probably what you'll end up accomplishing. But it's still smart to do the math and understand your break-even point. Okay, so if this list of positives looks like it's missing something, it is, but this is for both part-time and full-time realtors. Getting your real estate license to add more value to yourself as a real estate investor. This, of course, is so smart. If you're a real estate investor or planning on being a real estate investor, if you look at the math we did earlier, you only need one sale in your first year to break even. By your second year, you are making money on just even one purchase a year. But of course, if you plan on buying multiple investment properties, it's a no-brainer. I wrote this as an extra because smart realtors are also getting into investment properties, but yes. Amazing added value to yourself if you plan on getting into real estate to save on the big commission splits on the sell end, let's say if you flip homes, or receive big commissions on the buy side as you add investment properties to your portfolio. Okay, now on to what I would do as a brand new real estate agent getting my real estate license to work part-time. Let's base this scenario on eight hours a day are going to be taken from me from nine to five from my full-time job. Of course, if you have a job where you're able to make real estate progress at your work, you're in a better position for sure. But for the sake of this video, during those eight hours, I can't do anything real estate related. First thing I'm doing is joining eXp Realty. Let's just get that out of the way because I have to be fully honest with you, there's no way in a million years I'm joining a traditional brick and mortar brokerage where I can't even go to the office and learn from nine to 5 p.m. I'm aligning myself with like-minded people that teach and learn from video and are interested and invested in my success. Then I would set a new one-year schedule that would look like this. Monday to Friday, wake up every morning at 3.53 and from 4.30 to 6.30 a.m. I start doing research, studying, and learning on everything real estate. For research, this is going to be going through what I call the Bible. The software is called Matrix and it's the back end of the MLS. This is what separates us as realtors from the smart consumers in the market and gives us information that we can research to make us more valuable and find properties for our clients. For studying, I'm watching videos on the logistics and actions of the real estate process. A to Z on the complete buying and selling process so I can be confident when talking with potential clients. I have two playlists that I've made that after watching these videos, your confidence is through the roof. You learn the exact steps of working with buyers and sellers all the way from searching on the MLS, doing CMAs, using the appropriate forms, writing up offers, receiving offers, and ultimately taking a deal from the start to the end, a paycheck. And learning. Learning exactly how to prospect and how to generate leads. How to set up our cold calling and door knocking sessions, and also how to set up our digital marketing, running Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube ads. From 6.30 to 9 a.m. I would have the gym, diet, morning routine, and time with the family before my job starts at 9 a.m. After work, if I'm not showing properties to clients, I will be prospecting for an hour and a half. I'm gonna be monitoring my online ads and putting in a cold calling session. I'll do 15 minutes to follow up on any leads that I generated online while I was working, five minutes to set up my cold calling session, one hour straight of cold calling, ending with a 10 minute session review to plan my follow up on any good leads I generated. My day is done by 6.30 p.m. I'm personally not working into the evenings, of course, unless I have any properties to show. Saturday, I still wake up at 3.53 a.m. and continue with research, learning, and studying, but now I will be prospecting from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. with a 15-minute session review. Hopefully, this day will have a few showings in the afternoon, 
But if not, that's me done for the day. Sunday, of course, I'll still be working in the morning. It's what I like to do, but I won't be cold calling on the Sunday. And hopefully I have a few more showings on the Sunday as well. So that would be my schedule for one year if I had a full-time job. That schedule would have one goal in mind, quit my full-time job. Working part-time as a real estate agent 100% can be done. If your full-time job right now is investing in properties, then it's of course a no-brainer. It's just adding more value to yourself. If you have a normal nine to five job, then of course it will come down to your time management and the effort you put into your new small side business. But in both cases, do your due diligence at the beginning and try to align yourself with like-minded people for fast and future growth. I really hope that helped. And if you wanna find out what we're doing for brand new real estate agents here in Ontario that join eXp Realty with us, reach out. You can book a call with me. It's in the description below or just DM, email, join the Facebook group, I get back to everyone. If that's for you, I'll talk to you soon. If not, I'll see you in the next one.